Hi, Patrick here, at Cheeto Will View. Welcome to Mark Polonia Week, day three. Day three of uh, Mark Polonia Week. And uh, to celebrate, we asked the, uh, the Blue Angels to fly over our house. So if you hear a really loud jet noise, that's because the Blue Angels are flying over my house. Uh, so Mark Polonia Week is a collaboration between us and the House of Horrors. Uh, Stephen and Ms. Boomstick, we are celebrating all things Mark Polonia. Uh, for this uh, for this entry, we watched and are going to review uh, Amityville Death House. Uh, Amityville Death House is a 2015 film. It stars a lot of familiar uh, faces from Mark's uh, acting troupe. Uh, it has a very nice voice acting turn by our old friend Eric Roberts. And uh, an uncredited appearance by our, another good guy, John Miglior, who did uh, the Cannibal, uh, the, the Creature at Cannibal Creek, which is an excellent movie, by the way, Creature Feature. Uh, it also stars, and, and our main cast is uh, Kristen St. Pierre, who plays Tiffany, uh, Cassandra Hayes, who plays Bree, uh, Houston Baker, who plays uh, uh, Dig, and Michael Merchant, who plays Eric. Um, and it also has a couple other familiar faces, uh, Danielle Donahue, uh, Jeff Kirkendall, Catherine Sue Young, Ken Van Zandt. The, once you see the movie, you'll, you'll see, if you watch any of Mark Polonia movies, you'll instantly recognize several of his usual, uh, uh, actors that he uses in his productions. Uh, the story was written by John Oak Dalton, and, uh, let me just paraphrase this right off the bat. This is actually a pretty decent movie. <laughs> I know, I know. Sit down. Um, yeah, I I really, actually, I really very much enjoyed this movie. Um, uh, I thought it has a lot of heart. Um, the story was, was pretty damn strong, to tell you the truth. Um, yes, there are budget constraints, as always. Uh you know, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, don't let it take away from the movie. Um, just look for it for the story. Uh, the story being that uh, a group of friends are coming up from Florida. Uh, they have just got done helping uh, people recover from a hurricane. And they're driving up to New York to check on uh, Tiffany's aunt. And uh, little do they know that they're driving into... Uh, an evil uh, warlock who is uh, putting in motion a vengeance on the six ancestors of the family that killed a uh, supposedly killed a witch. Uh, obviously, we don't know if she's a witch truly beforehand or afterwards, but the curse, the, the vengeance uh, is, is for real. And, and the witch is spirit comes back and is definitely going after those who wronged her and her family um so of course tiffany and her friends are caught in the crossfire along with several town folk uh, i really thought this was really well done um i will have to say right off the bat that i i sense the script is what it was it didn't get messed with. It didn't get chopped up. It didn't get um, John Oak Dalton wrote a strong story, and it it shows. Um, again, I I can't begrudge the effects. I think they did the best they could. Uh, they shot on location. Um, I mean, in the well, I, they, the production was set in the, in, in winter time. It looked very cold. <laughs> so congratulations to. Uh, Congratulations to the cast and crew for uh, making this movie through through winter. Um, that's not easy to do. Um, the acting was actually pretty pretty above average. Um, I know I'm going to say this, and and I hope it doesn't you know hope it isn't taken the wrong way. But for an average Polonia movie, the I mean they you know a lot of times the Polonia movies they just they know they're having fun. They know they're not you know we watch Sharkenstein. You're not gonna you're not going to see anybody there but having fun. Um, this movie, they took it a little bit more seriously. Um, there's a little bit more gravitas in there. And um, 
I actually thought that Ken Van Zandt, who always seems to be playing things with with a tongue and firmly in his cheek, I actually thought he was damn good as McGrath, the sheriff. Um, I thought, uh, uh, and I thought that was a, I thought it was one of his best performances I've seen. Um, of course, you got the usual, uh, uh, you got the usual suspects having fun. Uh, Jeff Kirkendall and uh, uh, Austin Dragovich, they play a couple of, uh, a little too old per se, but a couple of good old boys. A couple of good old boys who are uh, looking out to protect their still, and uh, well, they they run into uh, they run into hell. That's what they run into. Um, the end of the movie is a little bit uh, derivative of Evil Dead. I will have to say that uh, there's a little bit of the Evil Deadness definitely influenced there. Um, but they do have the movie's best effect in there, which I won't tell you what it is because I don't want to spoil it. Um, and uh, it's pretty effective, really effective, really good effects, actually. Uh, looks like that's what they, as far as the effects budgets go, um, it looks like they spent their shot right there. And wisely so, by the way, uh, wisely so. Um, the, some of the actors are new to me. Um, uh, Kristen St. Pierre, who is a really cute girl. She's really, she's really cute. And, uh, she made a, a really good lead and, and, uh, not bad. She, she, she did really well. Uh, the rest of the, the, the three friends were also decent. Uh, Cassandra Hayes, Michael Burchett, and Houston Baker. They all did their all, they all did their best. And that's what really elevated this movie for me. Now, um... Would I run out there and tell you to go buy this movie on, on the shelf of Walmart? Eh, maybe. If it was like for a $5 bin or something like that. Um, I would definitely say this is one of the... This is the movie that I would... I would not turn away from my collection. If someone gave me a copy of this, I would not, you know, spurn my nose up at it. I thought their direction was pretty good. Uh, uh, Mark, Mark Poloni's direction was pretty good. The movie is pretty snappy. It's it the pace the pacing's really well done. Um, I mean, it doesn't drag. And he even he even uh, plays uh, uh, the the sheriff's deputy, and uh, not too bad either. Not too bad. Um, he didn't look at the camera or anything. I mean, he, you can tell he's been in piece. You can tell he's been in front of the camera a few times. Um, you know, he wasn't just there to fill up a slot because somebody didn't show up. Uh, I think he casted himself, you know, for the role. And, uh, yeah, he did a nice job. Uh, overall, I give this movie a thumbs up. I really liked it. I, I thought it was, you know, not bad at all. And, um, and and shows that he can do a more serious movie. That's probably the most important thing here is he can do what he wants to. He could do a straight horror film, um, and and uh, if he has a little bit of budget and the desire to do so, um, so I don't, I, you know, obviously I don't know. This is 2015, and this is my third Polonia film this week. So uh, we are off to see if there's any more like this. Uh, I saw this movie on Tubi. Uh, they have a ton of Mark Polonia films on Tubi. So you can watch Emily's Death House and any other, many, many others on Tubi, on Tubi, on Tubi. I almost said Tubi Tuesday. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Um, so, uh, obviously, since I saw this on Tubi, there's no extras I can tell you about. Uh, don't know if there's a commentary or not. You can get this movie, too. You can buy a physical copy at, uh, on probably eBay or Amazon. Or you can go to Wild Eye to buy it. I'm sure it's on Wild Eye. Um... Uh, or SRS. It could be this one could have been released by SRS too. All right, so that's it for us. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be back soon with another Polonia film for Mark Polonia Week. Thanks for watching, and we will talk at you soon. If you're new to the channel, please consider giving us a sub, hitting the notification bell, and leaving a comment down below. Uh, comments really do help the channel. And I uh, appreciate any, th any of your thoughts down below. Thanks so much, and we'll talk at you soon. Peace.